Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to a new Football Manager 2020 series. This is going to be with Inter Miami, and as you can tell from the title, it's essentially David Beckham's dream team that he wanted to create. So when David Beckham went to the MLS, played for LA Galaxy for a number of years, in his contract, he had the option of starting a new franchise club, and he... He chose, it, well, he chose Miami as his franchise location. He then fell into a number of different problems with the club. Uh, they were obviously supposed to be somewhat fast-tracked into the league due to his involvement. Um, but yeah, like I said, he had a number of problems. Uh, the biggest problem, I think, was the stadium. Uh, they had a lot of different stadium sites that were disapproved. And obviously, that had a knock-on effect, delayed the sort of team being functional and implemented into the actual league itself. And it's only recently that they've gotten approval for their stadium, well, in the last year or two. They are backed by a billionaire, a uh, Bolivian billionaire, I believe. Uh, there's also a few different people that are involved uh, with ownership and different stuff like that, as well as, you know, David Beckham owning some of the club himself. Now, if we get into some things about the club, we'll go straight into the club info. As you can see, uh, it was founded. Now, it's worth mentioning that I am actually a year and a little bit into the game. Uh, obviously, you have to simulate first, simulate the first season to get to the point where the team is actually implemented into the MLS, uh, similar to the other team that is, well, essentially joining the league with us, being Nashville. Now, as you can see, pretty good reputation. I think most MLS clubs will have this sort of reputation. Um, as you can see, if I go into the facilities here, we're currently playing at New Lockhart Stadium, uh, which is in, it's in Florida. It's in Fort Lauderdale. Um, unfortunately, not essentially actually in Miami at the moment, um, but that is because their new stadium, the Miami Freedom Park, is being built will be built in-game in 2022, uh, essentially on the 1st of February. So 25,000 capacity stadium being built. We are currently in an 18,000 18, capacity stadium. Um, as you can see, it was built in 2020, well, redeveloped in 2020 because Lockhart Stadium, I think, did exist before that. Anyway, moving on to the facilities. We've got great training facilities, great youth facilities, adequate academy coaching, and adequate recruitment for our youth as well. Um, as far as affiliated clubs, you do actually get the option to implement a second team that plays in the USL Pro, which is essentially a non-playable division, as you can see there. Um, so you actually get the choice to do that. So I did choose, obviously, it makes sense. You have a second team, you know, some academy graduates, some, you know, draft draftees from the super draft um, can essentially go and play there gain some sort of experience and uh, hopefully develop a little bit anyway that brings me on to i have a few points here that i've listed down and uh, the next one carrying on nicely would be the draft system now if you're not familiar with the mls we'll go into this first of all as you can see they have two conferences I'm sure most of you might be familiar with this. We've got the Eastern Conference, Western Conference. We are in the Eastern Conference. There are 13 teams in both of them. And of course, uh, the new team Nashville also find themselves in our conference. Now, you qualify for the playoffs by finishing in the top seven, as you can see there. Um, these teams all versus each other. If you finish first in your conference, you automatically go into the final of your conference, I believe. So all these teams will fight it out and essentially take on you. Um, I might be wrong about that, but let's have a little quick look at the rules here. Uh, there's also something else, like an overall league table, which is called the Supporter Shield, as you can see here. Um, but yeah, we'll go back into that and I'll show you the Supporter Shield. It's just an overall league table with all 26 teams. Um, and I believe if you win the Supporter Shield, if I scroll down here, Um, it might be here somewhere. Obviously, this is this is all changed. 
So yeah, the top team qualifies for the, sorry, the semi-final of the conference. And then all the other teams have to duke it out in the first round. Uh, but if we go down a little bit further, um, we've got some other stuff, important stuff there about squad registration, which I'll get into a little bit. Um, Maybe, maybe it's changed. I honestly didn't think it had changed. Maybe if I, yeah, there we go. I had to click support a shield. So as you can see, four teams qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League, which in itself has actually changed as well. It's now a straight knockout competition between each two, two of each teams. But as you can see here, so the places are allocated by the winner of the MLS Cup which is the playoff cup final winner. Of course, the two conference champions verse each other after the playoffs to determine the winner of the MLS Cup. Very confusing stuff, I know. Uh, but as you can see, you win the supporter shield, so the overall league table throughout the regular season, you do gain CONCACAF qualification. And of course, if you are the top team, so essentially if you make the MLS Cup, from your conference, you also get a place uh, with continental football. So yeah, good stuff there. There are other competitions such as the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup, which is the domestic cup that it essentially involves pretty much all the US teams, like the USL pro teams, college teams, different academy teams as well. So yeah, that's that. Now I want to talk about the draft. Now the Super Draft did actually take place because like I said, we are currently in the second season. We've started the second season of the save. Uh, I took place in the Super Draft. I think I drafted two different players. Actually, I think I drafted three players. I did give away one of our draft spots. I think it was the second round to actually sign a player, which is another thing I'll get into right now. And that is trades. As you can see, you're able to trade for different players. Now you can trade players, you can trade draft picks, you can trade general allocation money, which is sort of like a transfer budget that allows you to do different things in the MLS. As you can see, all these have been rejected because most of them are either for draft, my draft picks or for my players. Um, but as you can see, um, I've tried to put in a few different offers. Josie Altador is a very good striker. Uh, that is American. As you can see, there's lots of different things you can do. Um, and some of some of my players have actually been highly sought after since we've brought them in. Anyway, that, you know, segues into the next thing, which is the transfers. Now, the club did start with a number of players. I'll go into them very shortly here. As you can see, these players are, I sort by date. That'll probably be, probably be the best way. Although it isn't showing the players that were already at the club. It does show one of them, which is George Acosta. I'll go into him here. Now, he was a player that had a deal set up to come to the club at the start of the save. So prior to any involvement from us, he came in. Good little player, 20-year-old American. I've retrained him as a center mid uh, because we're going to be using a 4-4-2 tactic which I'll go into in a, in a second. These are the players. We're going to go through all of them. It's going to take a while, so please stick with it. Uh, but this will be the team. Now, the team is only consisting of 21 players, so we do have a rather small squad. But I feel like we've picked up some decent players to play, and I feel like we have enough backup, hopefully, for the first season. Now, the first player we brought in was Nick Bessler. He was brought in, I believe, might actually tell me, so the December waiver draft, which means uh, these players, their contracts were starting to run out. Their respective teams hadn't actually renegotiated with them. So their contracts were literally about to run out. Um, you go into a draft system. We had, I think, the 26th pick. I chose Bessler as one of them. Um, as you can see, just a, a center back that can play naturally in all three sort of central positions from the back line to midfield 26 year old solid enough and again i was looking at the wages because another great segue there you have a 
salary cap or a salary budget. Now, if you go here, as you can see, transfer budget's big, wage budget's big as well. However, if you go into league specific here, you can see your salary cap space. As you can see, we're only spending 35K out of 63K. Obviously, that's quite, we've got quite a bit of room to maneuver, um, but there are a few different things that also attribute to that. Um, one of them being your sort of marquee designated players, which are the players that don't count, their wages don't count fully to the salary cap. It gets capped at a certain point. However, you're able to offer them a hell of a lot more money. Players such as David Beckham, he was the, I'm pretty sure he was the inaugural designated player and that's where it came from. So a little bit of history there. I believe I'm not hundred percent on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how the rule was introduced. All right. Next player, we got Nahu Tolo, 22 year old Cameroonian left back. As you can see, he's got a bit of potential about him. Um, going to be the backup left back. I did sign him purely for the fact that he's only got 406 days left for U S nationality. Um, so at the moment he counts as an international player. Um, you are able to trade for international spots. We start off with an, with eight. However, we can obviously trade for ours, or we can trade for more, if that makes sense. Uh, the next player was Chris Muller, a player that has uh, actually gained a lot of interest from other clubs in the MLS. Um, again, 23 years old, relatively cheap. I was trying to get some decent players, decent young players that are going to be able to stick around for a few seasons and try and elevate us up the league to, you know, making the playoff spots, uh, which will probably be my main goal for next season. This first season, expectations are low. Hopefully your expectations are pretty low as well, being a brand new club. Um, and obviously I've had to sign all these players pretty much. Uh, the next player, we have Abubakar. Now this guy, another player that's garnered a lot of interest, 25 year old Ghanaian. He does actually have US nationality already. So that's perfect. And as you can see, he's by far our best center back at the club. Really solid, good positioning, good physicals, exactly what you need in the MLS. We then move on to our goalkeeper, first team goalkeeper, We've got Tyler Derrick. 31 year old American goalkeeper. Now goalkeeper was a really hard position to go after purely for the fact that there's, you know, limited goalkeepers and ones of quality are quite hard to find. Um, I did try and sign a, a guy that was a bit better than him, um, but unfortunately he rejected, he rejected us and went to a different MLS club. So yeah, so we'll be sticking with him. Um, unfortunately, our backup is dreadful. Again, not a lot of options. So I went with a youth player and hopefully we won't have to use him at all this season. Now, the next player was a player I really, I think he was our first choice in this waiver draft. And that is Greg, G actually no, he was in the expansion draft, which is another really complicated draft sort of system. Uh, the two expansion teams had free reign over a certain amount of players from each of the MLS teams that didn't, that weren't protected by those teams. Um, and essentially you can only pick one player from each team and that counts for both the new expansion teams. So, yeah, we got Greg Garza from Cincinnati. Of course, one of the relatively new teams as well. As you can see, he is pretty incredible. Um, definitely our first choice left back. 28-year-old American, 10 caps, four-star current ability, star player. Exactly what we needed. Now, the next player we got was former Arsenal youth player, Zellalem. Very, you know, he's a young player. Again, only 1K per week. Um, we will be playing on pounds. I was going to change it to dollars, but I feel like it'll just complicate things too much. So I do apologize for that if uh, if you're a little bit annoyed by it. It's just going to be easier, to, you know, for everyone to understand. And 1K pounds per week is the minimum. So it just, it seems easier to understand. Anyway, as you can see, he's really good. Um, he'll probably be starting for us. I don't see why he wouldn't be. Um, yeah, not, nothing much to say. Good, cheap, young American that we can obviously develop. Talked about Acosta already. 
uh, not my deal that was set up, um, as you can see. He's, uh, he's played for a few Argentinian teams. I'm sure he has second nationality there. We then signed Michael Parkhurst, 35-year-old American centre-back. Uh, can play right and left back as well. He was signed, as you can see, as a squad player. Really just for his experience. Gonna, gonna fill in when he's needed, if we get injuries or anything like that. Um, and he's exactly... He's exactly what we need for this first season, really. All right. So then we started to get into the Super Draft, which is, of course, the well, one of the ways you get youth players. However, the youth players are usually over the age of about 20. Now, we have this guy, Locklear. Now, he was a Generation Adidas player, uh, which is essentially like a scholarship-type player comes from the Super Draft. So he's 2.1k. I believe it's not actually costing us any money towards the salary cap. As you can see, he's pretty good. He's not he's not great, but he's pretty good. He's got potential as well. Good pace on him, good passing technique, a little bit of determination, and you know, we sort of needed a, a backup left winger. However, since then we actually managed to get a better option, which I'll go into in a second. The next player we got was Ben Chen. I believe he was a, a later round pick. Uh, we needed a backup striker. There wasn't really much on the sort of free market. Um, I could have paid money for, for certain players, uh, but they would have been internationals. Figured that we could get a nice, cheap, you know, sort of young guy from the draft. Ben Chen, he's not great, but he, he fits the backup role. And that's exactly what we needed. The next player was Brennan Aguila, central midfielder. Um, again, another backup player. Just just to fill in when he's needed, come off the bench if people are getting tired, stuff like that. Um, it's what a lot of these draft picks are going to be. I will be making the Super Draft an episode in itself each season, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. It'll be coming out, obviously, at the end of this first season. Uh, we then managed to sign Will Keane. Now, you'll probably be quite familiar with him. Manchester United played in the championship quite a bit, as well. We paid 750k, which I believe is a, a relatively cheap fee. Um, I think he might have actually been transfer listed. Uh, but as you can see, we play with a deep lying forward. Uh, we have two tactics. The one that we're sticking with plays obviously 442, two strikers, and he's gonna be one of them. 27 year old Irishman, really good, really, you know, he's a natural deep lying forward. 5.5k per week. I think he, he's, he's going to score a lot of goals, and I think he's a really good pickup for us, signing from Ipswich Town. Uh, the next guy is Cis, well, Ernesto Cisneros. Um, as you can see, he can play on both wings. Going to play on the right wing for us, though. Really good passing, really good dribbling. Going to be a pretty good winger, I would say. Can also play relatively well at both left and right back, so he's a great player to have. 26-year-old Mexican, 4.5k. And uh, we signed him for 235k, so a bit of a bargain there, to be honest. Uh, the next player we signed, our big sort of special splash out transfer, is this guy, 4.5 million, uh, which two of 2.5. Sorry, 2.5 of which will be over 12 months. Uh, the other two million was up front. And we signed him from Rotherham. And that is Matt Olusunde. 21-year-old American has picked up his first cap. Expecting him to obviously get a few more. But as you can see, he's going to be our first choice right back. Four-star current ability. Can also play center back pretty well. As you can see, 20 determination, really good physicals there for a, a fullback. And obviously, he's quite good going forward as well. All right, we then go into Byron Brown. This is our backup goalkeeper. He's only 17. He doesn't look too bad. But if he's called upon, we're in big trouble, I think. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about it. Uh, and the final player we just got in a draft that I really wasn't expecting 
is a, the March waiver draft. I completely forgot about it. And that is the players that don't make squad registration or if they're released. We got this guy, 17 year old. We actually had the first pick and I went with this guy. Um, he was above and beyond everybody else. Got 15 crossing, 15 dribbling, 15 first touch there as well. 13 acceleration, 13 pace. And he's also got 17 determination. So I see him now as the backup left winger. Um, our first choice right uh, left winger, sorry, we'll go into in a second um, because he was already at the club. Um, he's actually our highest earner as well. This guy is going to become a superstar, Mishchich. Um, that is how you pronounce his name. He is half Bosnian, as you can see there. So Mishchich, probably going to play more than his counterpart, Locklear, um, who is the Locklear. Is it Locklear or Locklear? I don't know. Probably say both throughout the series, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, Locklear, he's... I'm thinking about putting him in the second team. I'm going to keep both of them in the first team just for a while to see sort of what happens. Uh, but that's obviously a possibility. Now let's get into the, the tactic and the team. Now there are the other players that I didn't get to talk about. Um, and these guys were at the club when the game first starts. First of which, Julian Carranza. 19 year old Argentinian. Four star current ability. Really, really solid striker. Only on 2.1k per week, which is very, very cheap. As you can see, Miami have paid 4.6 million pounds for him before they even start a game. Um, he was loaned straight back to Banfield, which is the club that they purchased him from. So there's that. He's a really good striker. He's currently coming back from an injury that he picked up. So he'll play in the second game of today, which we'll go into in a second. Um, but yeah, another thing is, as you can see here, I'm assuming it's a bit of a bug or a glitch. Now, this guy, Tommy Redding, um, I signed him on a free transfer, so he was my first signing in that first season, and something super weird happened. I signed him on a contract, came on a, a free transfer. I then tried to, you know, give him another contract because I was like, oh, why is he on a free transfer? That's really weird. And then it essentially just duplicated the player. I don't know what's happening. Definitely a bug of some sort, and uh, yeah, um, he's actually not even registered for the squad, so I don't even know, I mean, I guess he can actually play the games, it looks like he can anyway. Um, so yeah, and of course the other player is our designated, or young designated player, another 19 year old Argentinian, Matthias Pellegrini, he's pretty incredible. Um, we are training, retraining him as a left winger, or left midfielder. Um, because he's only natural in the more advanced attacking midfield role. Yeah, he's he's going to be dangerous, especially once he gets sort of uh, accomplished in the left midfield position. And I think he's going to score a lot of goals. Uh, there was one other player that I've dropped down to the second team. If we go into the development center here, we got Inter Miami two. Um, obviously, these two players are just available for the team. Uh, but we also have this guy who started at the club, Christian Macoon. He's on 5.5k per week, which is pr pretty much the reason why I didn't include him in the team. Um, undisclosed fee from Venezuela. So yeah, that's that. That's the transfers. Um, actually, I'll get back into it. This is the tactic we're playing. Advance forward, deep lying forward, uh, two attacking wingers, two box-to-box -box midfielders, both on support, obviously. Uh, we've got inverted wing backs, and then we've also got ball playing defenders. Uh, it's very similar to my tactic I'm using on my other series, my AC Milan series. Be sure to check it out, uh, which is this tactic here. I've got both of them in here, but I think I'm going to stick with the 4-4-2. Uh, never really used a 4-4-2 on Football Manager, and I've played for nearly 10 years now. So looking to, to see how this does. Uh, they're both attacking tactics. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to defend. I'm not a defender. Well, actually, I, I was a defender in real life, but I'm not going to be a defender or play a defensive-minded tactic. Now, yeah, let's get into the lineup for the first game against LAFC, our first MLS game of the series, of the team's history as well. And yeah, the starting lineup, Derek in goals, Olusunde at right back, Besla and Abubakar as the center halves with Gaza at left back, 
Two box to box midfielders going to be a Costa, uh, which is, of course, the one thing I don't like about this guy, one strength really puts me off. Um, and then he's going to be partnered by Aguila. Is he, though? I think Zelalem. Yeah, we'll go with Zelalem. He's much stronger in regards to quality. So yeah, Zelalem will partner him. Uh, Cisneros will be the right winger. Pellegrini will be the left winger. And then we're going to go with Keane and Chen up front. The bench is going to be... Well, we're actually without a goalkeeper. So, yeah, Brown's out with a cold. And then we're going to go with Bai, who is our right back. Why didn't he show up? Oh, because he was a trade. So, yeah, we got Brandon Bai... Um, we essentially just gave our second pick in the Super Draft for him. Um, but yeah, he's just our backup right, uh, right back. So obviously he's not not too special. Uh, but yeah, he's partnered by Parkhurst, Tolo, Norman, who's another player. Not really much to talk about with him. He started at the club as well. Was on loan to one of the Canadian Premier League teams. Uh, but yeah, probably not going to play too much. I sort of rate the other center midfielder, a little bit higher than him, to be honest, in Aguila, who is also on the bench with Miss Chich and Mueller. Let's advance, get into this first game. Now, LAFC, in real life, they have, I think they got to the final of their conference. They got some really, really good players. They got this guy, Diego Rossi, up front. Very good young Uruguayan striker. Also got Carlos Vela who is an incredible player. Let's just put it that way. I'm pretty sure he was... He might have even been the, the leading goal scorer this season in real life in the MLS. Um, but yeah, let's advance here. Um, I'm going to say I'm expecting you to win. You know, we're at home. It's our first ever game for the club. I'm expecting them to, to win here today. Put a big smile on David Beckham's face. I will be playing all the games in 3D. I'm not really, not really a big fan of 2D. Uh, replays will be on in sort of slow motion as well. Anyway, Chen's in behind here. One-on-one, -on -one and he cannot put it past the goalkeeper. What a great opportunity that was. Garza with a corner. Olasunde. And that's the end. Oh, all of Sunday with an injury. A big, big marquee signing. Um, all of Sunday, I didn't actually mention it, but he's on a designated player contract, um, but it's a really cheap one. He wouldn't negotiate for anything less. And I mean, we, we didn't actually have a, a second designated player anyway, so it didn't really matter. Put him on that contract, and I think we'll try and negotiate him off it. Anyway, Pellegrini here. That's a bad shot. The star man with a really bad shot there. Chen on the corner. I didn't expect him to score our first ever goal in the MLS. I was expecting it to be someone else, but Ben Chen. Straight from the corner. Gaza getting the assist. Just really, really unexpected there, to be honest. LAFC, I think they hit the post there with that free kick. So far, so good, though. Oh, and Georgia Costa has now picked up a knock as well. I think... I think we're going to leave him out there. I only want to do that because I really want to win this first game. It's an interesting ball there by Bai. The right back. Gets it back. Puts it out to Pellegrini. Can he get across? He can. Chen hits the post. Thought he was about to get his second goal there. I mean, there are a few players out there that aren't really playing too well. Cisneros is, is one of them, along with Acosta, although he does have that knock. Pellegrini gets in there, 2-0. Brandon Bayer, the substitute with the assist. And the 
Young designated player, the highest owner at the club as well, getting the goal there. So Bai put a put a throw in, Keane with the layoff, and Bai with a beautiful cross to the back post, and Pellegrini on the half volley, putting it in the back of the net. We're two 0 up in the first half. So far, so good. Now I want to ease Bezler off. Um, pretty much all of our players are tackling harder with their player instructions. So we've really sort of got to be got to be wary about that when players pick up yellow cards because they more than likely will pick up a red card. Cisneros keeps it in, plays it to Kane. Zelalem, ooh, Acosta. So close there. But as you can see, the team's playing really well. I was a little bit wary going into this first game. They have some really good players. A great tackle there. Ooh, and that's just wired by their player. Lucky. It looked a little bit shaky there. A little bit shaky as Gaza picks up a yellow card there as well. I think I might take Acosta off. Cisneros, we've got players over, and he shoots. Oh my god. If he crossed that, I think we would have scored a third goal. That is really disappointing. Ooh, I thought they were in behind there for a second. All right, we're going to take Acosta off. And I think we'll bring Aguila on. Part of me wants to take Pellegrini off and give Miss Chich a bit of a run out, but I think we'll wait maybe, maybe the 75th minute. Also, just to rest him for the next game as well. So yeah, Miss Chich on for Pellegrini. I mean, Cisneros, yeah, we'll, we might as well, let's do all three. Oh, we can't. Completely forgot about the first sub there. Yeah, Cisneros, he's on a 6.6, .6, really not playing too well. And he's also heavily fatigued. There we go. A 2-0 victory to kick things off. I'm very, very happy with that result. All right, so six six to seven weeks for Ulusunde. And Acosta's only out for a couple of days there as well. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to advance forward the six days and we'll get into our second game of the episode against the Houston Dynamo. All right, well, let's get into the lineup for the second game of the episode against Houston Dynamo. Basically, we're going with the exact same team, except for the fact that Bai has obviously come in due to the injury for Ola Sunday. And then, of course, Carranza is now fit again, so he's gone onto the bench, as well as Brown, the 17-year-old backup goalkeeper. So, yeah, let's submit the team. We'll get into it. Chen does keep his spot after scoring the first goal for the club. Possibly might be becoming a bit of a, a cult hero throughout this series. And uh, we're at home again, so I'm just going to tell the boys that I expect them to win. And hopefully they'll repeat exactly what they did against LAFC. Alright, we've got a corner. Of course, Chen scored. He almost scores again. Wow. He's definitely a, a, bit, of a bit of a danger man from set pieces by the looks of it. Oh, Cisneros. Kane. Can he shoot? Oh, he lays it back. Pellegrini hits the post, I think. That was a weird, weird play. I don't... Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, Gaza with another corner. Very poor, though. Can't get it past the first man. He'll get another chance to put it in. Plays it to Cisneros. Zelalem. Not a great shot, straight at the goalkeeper, really. 
But we're looking positive. We're looking positive. All right, bye. That's a poor, poor ball. I mean, I guess he was trying to switch it, but yeah, it was pretty dreadful. Oh, and luckily, luckily, their player left the ball behind. Could be on a counter-attack. Chen brings it down nicely. Kane, 1-0. Could be offside, though. I think it might be. Yeah, Kane is going to be offside. Really disappointing there. And Bezler's picking up a yellow card pretty early on as well. All right, we got Kane again. Bye. Can he get a cross in? Lays it off to Zellalem. Acosta gives the ball away. Very disappointing. Yeah, like I said, I'm not I'm not a big fan of Acosta. I'm pretty sure he's from Miami, which is sort of the reason why he was brought in. Anyway, Chen's in behind. Sort of went for a bit of a, a ninja kick and didn't score. Come on, Chen, you're better than that. Well, I don't really think he is, but... I'll stick with him if he scores goals. I'll say that right now. Anyway, Acosta. Zellalem. Kane. By Scores. Brandon By, The backup right back. He got an assist in that first game. And now Will Keane's put him in behind. And then he's put a pretty decent shot. A nice low shot past the goalkeeper there. Beautiful layoff. And then he bangs it first time. Goalkeeper had no chance at all. I mean, so far, so good. And like I said, this is pretty much my first time using a 4 4 2. Oh my god, Chen hits the post. This. I don't even. I have no words to describe Chen already in the first episode. Gaza. Another poor cross from him. Probably one of our best players, Gaza. And uh, he hasn't looked too good today. We need to defend, though. Probably something I'm gonna... I'm gonna say a lot. But that's that's a good defensive display from Zellalem. Putting Chen one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and he scores! No way! It's gonna be offside. Oh, come on. You've got to give it to him. So disappointing. Anyway, it's just good to, you know, see him put it in the back of the net. Bubikar plays a nice long ball to Keane. In behind, one-on-one. -on -one. That's a good save by their goalkeeper. Really good save. Another corner. And Garza get it in this time. Almost gets it to Keane. However, Ellis, ooh, Cisneros, oh, he doesn't get a yellow card for that. That's interesting. Thought he was going to get a yellow for that for sure. Ooh, that is interesting. I don't know why Pellegrini left that then. Anyway, Costa to buy. Another poor ball by Costa. I mean, luckily their player just took a, a wild shot. Yeah, Costa, he's on a 6.6. I'm not feeling him. I'm not feeling him. Abubakar. Yes! 2-0. Abubakar's first goal for the club as well. And we're 2-0 up. As we go into half time. I mean, terrible defending by their player. Turner, the goalkeeper, almost got his hands to it properly. But he could only parry it into the back of the net. And we're 2-0 up as we go into half time. Super good stuff. I mean, what a positive first episode. Gotta smash the like button for this. I mean, a brand new club. David Beckham's dream, his baby. That he conjured up himself. And we're playing so well. Which is surprising. Anyway, Gaza, can he get a cross in? He cannot. 
He cannot find a cross, this guy. I don't know what's wrong with him. I'll say that and he'll probably he'll probably get an assist somehow. Anyway, Zelalem. Oh, thunders against a crossbar there. Absolutely thundered against it. Alright, Keen. Bit of a wayward pass there back to Bai. Acosta. Zelalem. Bai again. Can he cross it? He can. Chen! Oh my god, he's done it again. And that rhymes. Chen has done it again. Ben Chen. I mean, every, everything's rhyming at the moment. Ben Chen has done it again. I should make that a t-shirt. Sounds like a good, you know, merch opportunity. Ben Chen has done it again. First goal scorer for the club. And now he's, he's two and two. And he gets, he keeps that ball in. Absolute legend. This Neros with a, a very good opportunity. Oh, and Abubakar does well. Can only get it to their player though. Somehow we're, we're, you know, we're defending by the skin of our teeth, which is what you'd expect from an attacking tactic like this. Oh, Gaza, nice and strong. He might not be the best crosser in the world, but at least he can defend. Let's say that. I mean, things are going from bad to worse for Houston. We're going to make a sub here as well. Uh, Aguila can come on for Acosta. And I, yeah, I guess we'll bring Mizchic on again. Yeah, I think that'll work out. I might even bring Chen off. Actually, I can bring Kane off. Anyway, another highlight here. Apparently not. It was a very short highlight by Chen. We do have another one. Gaza with a free kick. I think that's a penalty. I think our player was pushed in the back. I'm not sure who's going to take the penalty. I don't think I actually set that up. I'm hoping it'll be... Kane, because I think he has 16 penalty taking. I'm really hoping it's him. Yeah, it's a penalty. Okay. Good stuff for us. And we make it 4-0. I'm pretty sure Chen actually won that penalty as well. Yeah, it's going to be Kane. And he scores it. Get in there. 4-0 against Houston. The dream start is real. I mean, I honestly thought we were going to get absolutely battered in this first season. And we've just beaten LAFC 2-0. And it looks like we're about to beat Houston 4-0. Um, so I'm going to take Keane off for Carranza. Of course, he was just injured, so we'll get him some sort of game time. Even if it's only like five minutes. Lacking a little bit of match fitness, but... You know, he's probably not going to pick up too much, too much match fitness either. With this uh, limited minutes here. We're coming forward again though. Cisneros. Zelalem. By. Somehow in central midfield. Oh my god. Cisneros with a nice shot. But it just goes wide. Pretty unlucky. I mean he, he probably should have scored today as well. I think that should be full time. There we go, 4-0 victory over Houston Dynamo. Abubakar, man of the match as well, the central defender. Brilliant stuff. Second clean sheet as well for Derek. Is it Derek or Derich? I think it's Derek because he's only American. And uh, we also have Carranza making his debut there. But what a start, guys. If you could smash the like button, it'd be much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, yeah, the next episode will hopefully be out tomorrow. Hope you've enjoyed. As always, take it easy and goodbye.